okay, like completely irrelevant to the main chapter, but honestly, this one was impressive. She's flying on the plane. Before we open this review of chapter 328 of My Hero Academia, please me a favor, leave your own thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit the little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Now, let's get into it. What's up, guys? I'm Glafonso, and here we are to read chapter 328 of My Hero Academia, known as No Man is an Island. And aka, um, ironically enough, you can definitely argue some art, but regardless of that, we get to see. Something that I'm actually glad that we're getting elaboration on. I'm not sure if I complained about that. Like, all those chapters ago when we first saw the Tartarus breakout. But a thing that I've always, like, low-key been thinking was, like, you know, we kind of glazed over that. Like, massive, this massive super villain level prison that had multiple dangerous inmates in them. Like, the breakout kind of happened in one chapter. It was mostly off-screen, and we never got to see any of the real repercussions. We never even got to see it really in action. We only saw it from All For One's point of view. And then after that, we cut away. So to see like our, well, it's weird to call Stain our protagonist for this chapter, but to see our protagonist for this chapter going through it, living life, trying to survive in this chaos, it's actually really, really cool. I appreciate it because it provides like a whole new angle to what is a super major event within the series. Like without this event, we wouldn't even have the current narrative with all the super villains that were going after Deku and Deku tiring out. Like without this, Lady Nagant would have even been freed. We wouldn't have had like a good chunk of the last arc if it wasn't for this moment. So to see it elaborated on is really cool. And the thing is, we get to see this one serial killer running out and about like he's about to go. Uh, I'm not going to verbalize that for the sake of um, fear. And we get to see Stain just instantly come in and just say, yeah, you know what? No, I believe in true equality. And that means everyone gets the blade. And <laughs> I love how his like Stain's motions to get rid of somebody. They're like so casual and instinctive at this point that he doesn't even really like acknowledge the fact that he just got rid of another human being he, he sort of was just like instantly hmm, what the heck is going on here like he doesn't have a sweat mark on his face he doesn't have any like confusion his thought bubble is clear like he's legit just focusing on huh okay everything's going bad what's going on right now what can i do here and i think that's really really cool it shows how stain despite being like a crazed fanatic that has loads of problems mentally and definitely physically i know that man has different types of blood disease for he has a different blood disease for every letter in the alphabet in terms of the English and Greek one. I know that man's going crazy. But regardless of that, we see that due to the isolation that Tartarus provides, no one had any idea what was going on inside the prison, which makes sense. That was pretty much established as Tartarus was this off-island prison that no information should have gotten in or out. How All for One got information in and out is like, I think it was explained? I think it was explained how he got information in and out. I don't remember off the top of the domer, but I'm pretty sure it's like his mind, his like conscience inside Tartarus managed to relay information through radio waves that he kept reflecting off the inside of Tartarus's walls and then he proceeded to relay that information to the Shigaraki mine as like almost like a Wi-Fi receiver like the two managed to get information and obviously all for one Shigaraki was just so powerful that as long as he could like trace the beacon to his original body he wouldn't really have to worry about any of Tartarus's defenses because he was literally a demon. So it's cool to see how Stain is just like, okay, regardless of everything is going crazy with Tartarus falling right now, the most important thing I need to do is get some info on what the heck is going on. And he goes around, like he avoid. the interesting thing is he avoids the common crowd. Like the common crowd of villains are just rushing out. And I'm assuming they're rushing to the point where they found like all for one standing above in like the pit of the burning Tartarus and how he like joined them all together under his regime and let them roam out into the world. But Stain is the person who's like going down these old rotten corridors and even finds this old security room. And the thing is, we get to see that Stain is reviewing the area and finding all these people dead. Instead of going with his initial assumption that everybody was dead and there was nothing to get here and he should have keep moving on, he paid enough attention to notice that one man was still alive and they were holding on to something very, very tightly. And the thing is, is that he was instantly about that life he was like come on now i need information i require it i need that i want that i'm dreaming about that if you get that reference you're just as bad as me but regardless of that the thing is i love how like this is gonna sound weird i love how dramatic stain is in his own head like for some reason this man just sounds like so shakespearean the others <clears throat> let me get my best stain impression on even though i haven't watched the anime and don't know the english nor japanese voice for stain <clears throat> yeah 
the others met their grisly fates ending <laughs> wait no I, let, me, let me hit that again the others met their grisly ends gripping firearms but this one clutches something else like a babe in his arms like <laughs> what kind of what kind of mass murdering supervillain is like this poetic i know Dobby's a cornball, so he's probably this poetic when he wants to be. But Stain, come on now, bro. You, you madman. But the thing is, we get to see that this thing that the dude is clutching, it's like, this guy, I guess he knew Stain. Well, I guess Stain's name was pretty widespread. But for the fact that this man literally came out with the full name, Chizome Akagulo, you worked with Shigaraki. This is not for you. Um, I mean... I get that's, that's a common misconception though. Like no one actually listened to what Stain said, or like I guess Stain never even really clarified. Like Shigaraki used Stain purely, purely by pure luck, I guess. Purely by pure luck. Great English, English one thousand. But regardless of that, Stain was like a byproduct that accidentally led to the League of, Vill League of Villains exploding. Like everyone just assumed he was in the League of Villains. No one actually got the cold hard confirmation on that. And it's not like Stain was going out giving press conferences. So this man definitely was just used as a tool. So everyone assumes he's working with Shigaraki. But the thing is, this man kind of sold <laughs> because the moment he said that, Stain was like, well, so it's something important. I'm going to take that. And we see that it's this, like, stored data box. And, you know, I have, like, a little terabyte extension for my PS4, like a little, like, passbook or whatever, pocket, whatever, you know, to keep my data in. But to be fair, it looks nothing like that. That looks like power pills or something like that it looks like it looks like a vitamin jar or like you know how you have like medicine for every day of the week it looks like you put something like that in there it does not look like a data cube but regardless of that we get to see that <laughs> i love how this dude well on the verge of death is really out here making demands and stuff like drop it that must reach the right people give it back not for you must do my duty like bro what the heck? What do you really think you were going to do? And the thing is, I'll give him credit. This dude must have been like super dedicated because he managed to get the toolie out. Like he pulled, he pulled up with the blick. But the thing is, as this dude is like aiming, Stain legit is just like, okay, don't worry. I completely understand. This society has gone to destruction. And to be fair, he's relying on very old information. Like. It's not like this dude told him about the modern state of the world, like, oh, no, literally, there was a massive multi, multi, actually, it wasn't really multi-day, it took place all over the course of one day, but still, there was a massive, gigantic scale war, and thousands of people died, and stuff like that, and cities were ravaged and destroyed, he doesn't know anything about that, he's still going on the, literally, like, chapter 40 knowledge he had of the Hero Society, so I want, I really wish we got to see more of Stain's reaction to like the modern world right now like this era of chaos like we got little glimpses of it last chapter but i really wanted to see more, not last chapter the chapter before that but i really want to see more of it because i feel like he'd be kind of happy in this scenario because all the heroes that are still around are like the kind of heroes he would vibe with in comparison to the heroes that were around the populace before that are the people he wouldn't rock with so i feel like i don't know i feel like Stan would actually be kind of happy in this new world even if it is a lot more chaotic but the thing is like i wonder how accurate no this is literally a flashback so this has to be accurate but i wonder if this is like we've already seen that the narrator at this point is stain right like the boxes that we have he, we're not in his thought bubbles but that is the the boxes we see earlier are stain's own perspective and we get to see later on in the chapter that this is like reading hmm that's weird. It's it's like the people are reading the note left behind by Stain. So I'm wondering if any of this is dramatized. Because like for the police officer or the guard to be like, Akaguna, are you a man or a beast? Like in my dying moments, I'm not concerned about whether some dude is a man or a beast. I'm concerned about me, I don't know, maybe dying. But the thing is, we get to see that Akaguro in his own mind actually answers the question. Well, not his own mind. He actually says it. Like, hmm. I'm merely, I'm no, I'm merely an ally to the idea of the world as it should be, but a beast all the same. He's essentially saying, and justify the means, I will be a monster to try and get to the real world. And however, and however, that's a weird conjugate. Like, I use two con. Ah. I need to improve my English. Let me take some English class. Y'all got any English classes? Hey, yo, any, any English teaching thing want to sponsor me? No, I'm kidding. But regardless of that, Akaguro seems to note the idea that he's like, a deuce a decent dude who's like now nah, he's not a decent dude he's a monster that's trying to do for a better world but same killing people like 
it's not the way like you dobby sugar rocky like <laughs> I, I, I don't get your methods, man. I just really don't. And to be fair, Dobby doesn't have any methods. Dobby's whack. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Dobby's whack. If y'all if y'all really rock with Dobby, I'm happy for you. I ain't. Dobby whack. But Sugar Rocky, like, man, whatever. Both Sugar Rocky and Stain are, like, kind of whack in their ideologies. I'm not going to lie. On the sheer, like, oh, the best way to fix everything is to kill a bunch of people. Like, where's the correlation? You can't. <laughs> that one doesn't work. But we see that. Stain does somewhat bear witness to All for One and Shigaraki, which is also All for One, standing there above like this tide of chaos, like acting as the messiahs of sort to all these crazed villains that see the Lord of all evil and his surrogate, his second his second coming in a sense, standing there. And we see that Stain, as he witnessed this, is still thinking on the idea that, yo, I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what this data is, but it seems pretty important and it seems to pertain to those two in particular. So, go ahead. I'm entrusting this to you, the one person who I respect above all others, All Maito. And, yo, can we, sh hold on, pause, complete diversion from the story. Can we talk about how great now Masa looks with, like, is it 5 o'clock shadow? Is that, like, an actual beard? Like, somehow this man went from 5 to 50 in a matter of... A few extra pen strokes like this man looks amazing with the little just five o'clock shadow and stuff like that it is great but then we get to see that now masa despite like dealing with this super like high risk high danger situation and having really big news to reveal as we see towards the end of the chapter he still is like he still cares about the relationship between all might and midori and i think I think that's pretty cool. Like, now Masa is a character who, in Vigilantes, is, I'm pretty sure, is to be set up as, like, the only real confidant of All Might. And we know that now Masa knows All Might's secret. Like, he knew that all the way back towards the beginning of the series. I think even before Vigilante dropped. But we get to see that regardless of all the differences they have, one being a hero, one being a police officer, one being quirkless, one having, at one time, having the most powerful quirk. Actually, no. Is now Masa quirkless? Is now Masa I, Hold on. Back, be right back. All right, I'm back. At least it doesn't seem he has a quirk. I think they're both quirkless at this point. He's just a police officer. Like, they've, they've had numerous differences over the years, but they're still friends, and Namasa still directly cares about what All Might is going through, even if it's not as important as the situation at hand, considering it's a relationship compared to the lives of possibly thousands, if not millions, really, at this point. We get to see that Tartarus' system has, like... It's almost a locked off grid like it has the ability to probably interact with the outside world but it's built in a way in order to prevent interference from external forces so thanks due to that no one would act to have access to the data that they get in there and ironically enough no data would be sent out the data seems to be around the like idea of the system shutdown which we get to see was caused by sugar rockies slash all for one's radio wave manipulation where they managed to like short circuit everything in the area because you know um radio waves and that's how that works i'm not i'm not a top tier scientist any actual radiologist i'm not sure doesn't that isn't that the study of like nuclear matter regardless of that any person tells me if that's supposed to work i'll believe you but then we get to see that somehow he managed to like like i like i said like all for one and sugar rocky due to them both being like a merged conscience of all for one or like a split conscious of all for one they managed to like coordinate their radio waves so that together they managed to outpower it from the outside and break it down from the inside to create this almost like synchronistic clashing of just radio waves and it's short circuited everything but the thing is we also get to see that this um this ability of thought I don't know what I was about to say. This ability of thought sharing is a universal thing for anyone who passes quirks in a sense. Because All Might explains that he has the same phenomenon with All for One. And we also get to see that the All Might that is inside of the One for All gets like 100% full access to All Might's thoughts. Like somehow this thing is caught up on everything All Might does. Meanwhile, the one that's inside can't seem to send any thoughts it has back to the main All Might. However, All Might finds that's only the case when he's not in close contact with Midoriya because he felt exactly what All Might was... No, All Might felt exactly what his internal self was thinking in the midst of 
Midoriya's whole test of like resolve in terms of taking down All for One and Shigeru. Well, no, taking down Shigaraki, not specifically All for One. We actually still, to this day, and I mean to this day, we don't actually know what Midoriya's thoughts are on All for One. We don't really know if Midoriya is like on the mindset that, oh, uh, Shigaraki can be saved, but All for One needs to go, or All for One needs to be saved too. We don't really know about that. Like, we've seen Midoriya get angry at All for One, but we've never actually gotten to hear his like real thoughts on it. We've only seen Shigaraki's thoughts. I'm actually intrigued to see what Midoriya thinks about that. I hope we get that soon. But then we get to see that due to like this internal resolve test and the close connection to All Might, or no, All Might's close connection to Midoriya, he managed to like read the thoughts or, or no, get the feeling intake, a feeling flow from his other self. And that's interesting to see because it's like, how'd you do that? Or at least if he, if that's how it works with All Might, how did the two vestiges of All for One communicate? And then we get to see that All for One managed to like, it, it would essentially mean that All for One managed to actually like communicate somehow with way longer distance through all for one then one for all is even though all for well technically all for one is multiple people like it's if we're being real about it sugar rocky i mean that's the question though when all for one consumes another quirk does it take in a vestige like all for one does or one for all does or does it simply take the physical power and traits of the quirk without any vestige at all because reasonably inside sugar rocky and all for one's like mindscape if it was the I'm not sure if it's the former or latter, but if, if it was the whole idea that, oh, it's everybody, like every last person in the world that all for one absorbed has a vestige, then there should be like hundreds, if not thousands of people chilling inside all for one or maybe even bound or something like that. We only always see Shigaraki and all for one. So maybe all for one's quirk works different where he doesn't have to worry about the vestiges and thus maybe it's stronger, but we don't really get to see that. And it seems like instead of actually using this like loosely like quirk wi-fi thing with the vestiges they actually managed to communicate through the radio waves and this seems kind of strange to me because you feel like i get that some of the radio waves were like super powerful and managed to disrupt tartar's systems but isn't there metal or is i feel like you can like reflect radio waves or something i know you always can receive them but it seems weird that somehow this they managed to do all this in such like clean fashion that tartarus had no defenses against radio wave communication I get, I get like the amped radio waves could destroy things, and that's how they managed to destroy and break free of Tartarus. But like the regular radio waves that they're using to communicate, I'm kind of shocked. But then we get to see that the information that was portrayed through the radio waves that allowed them to communicate and coordinate also said one extra thing. And it was the idea that Shigaraki is going to be complete within 38 days. However, that was relative to the time that Shigaraki actually had that conversation. And the actual schedule of, of Shigaraki's completion is not actually... 38 days thanks to all the time that's passed it is three days time and um that's a that's a, that's a, that's expediting the process right there well, kids you better you better get it up and get it moving nice and spiffy because otherwise you are in trouble and then we get to see something that we've been kind of waiting to see like as a collective like the other heroes from other nations like where have they been aren't they supposed to be here helping everybody out what's going on we see that the other heroes are like being held back by their nation like their nation is begging to help like especially the heroes are begging to help especially for all might because you know all might's like this prime center of this world he's the original big bad hero i like, see I, when i say big bad hero that sounds bad but no like he's the original big hero out there so i guess you could say he's the big hero one instead of big hero six but we see that all these people are coming desperate to come and help but these are all like fodder one-off characters that Horikoshi drew as a joke. I doubt we're ever actually going to see them. But we see a certain nation's hero decided to just jump the gun. They didn't wait for any approval. They didn't wait for any orders. They went on out and decided to just do the good do. And we see that this hero is the United States of America's number one hero, Star and Stripe. And she says her master's in the pickle. Why would I think twice? She's going to go out there and do what no other nation was willing to do and simply just <laughs> defy orders, which makes sense. I feel like a world that was inspired by All Might, a dude who wasn't very conventional in terms of like the modern hero anyway, would inspire people like this to come do things for him. And thusly, like sort of have an international fan base that would be willing to help him out in a situation like this. That's very, very cool to me. And I'm happy that we get to see this. And overall, this chapter was very, very good in the context of itself because it gives you multiple things it gives you a perspective of 
stain that we really get to see stain on his own stains inner thoughts stain literally going through a scenario that we've never really seen him in before where he's literally like he's still strong relatively we saw what he did to that one dude but in terms of like raw physical power he's kind of cowering he's hiding he doesn't directly interact with all for one or sugar rocky because he knows they're that strong it's cool to see staying in a situation like that it's also cool to see tartarus being like in this state on destruction and confusion and all the villains running about because it's a state that sort of gets glossed over in the original time that we got to see it. I'm glad we got to see more of it. We also got to see what Stain does for certain people. Like, in a way, he provided hope and information to the heroes when he was the one initially killing them. It's really very... It's There's so many different things in this chapter that I really, really enjoy that's gonna have to get the nice meaty. <laughs> Do I give it a 10? I think I give it a 10. Only for the fact that like, there's nothing wrong with the chapter other than the fact that it feels a little bit short. But every single thing in this chapter, it explains everything it talks about. It has a really good setting, has really good perspective, amazing artwork, as always. So let's see this final page with Star and Stripe. She looks great with all the extra detail on her outfit. Even the detail in the plane that she's standing on, which is still super impressive. Like, this woman is legit just standing on a plane, because why not? You know? You ever just be standing on a plane? I, I, guess, I guess I guess she do. She do. She built different. She's better than me. I could never. But the thing is, all this chapter does is, and it even explains like a prospect of something that we've been waiting forever for. These international heroes, where have they been? What's going on? Why are they waiting so long to come in and help? We get to see the reasoning behind that. We get to see someone who bucks the trend and breaks the rules. Everything in this chapter is great. And I love it. Fantastic. Nine, no, 10 out of 10 chapter. I don't know why I tried to drop the score there. But that's what I think. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with the Pencil, writing off.